Oh, yes. Yeah. They just said, my Thank husband you. just answered me. So thank you everybody for coming to the PNI Dallas chapter monthly dinner meeting and really nice to see you virtually. We have we have 140 chapter servant leaders here to serve you in different departments. If you are looking for a great place to serve and great place to contribute to others, here is a great place for you. And we appreciate all our corporate ambassador. This is a company we have for the corporate ambassador. Later on, Laura will get everybody a highlight of what the corporate ambassador do and have a call for action for you. On this slide, you will see this is our chapter board director. PNI Dallas chapter, we serve 4,600 members in the Dallas area with 11 board directors. Different board directors have different functionality. And I do know a lot of board directors already speak, but if you are here, I'm going to still call your name. If you are here, please respond, and we will get our board director just one minute and speak something uplifting for each of our members who attend today. Laura, I see you. So, Laura. Um, hi. Hello, everyone. Thank you for being here. Um, delighted to see such happy faces amidst um, being locked down for so many weeks. So, makes me feel happy that we can still laugh and talk and life goes on and we're out here to help you guys. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. I see Julio is here. Julio, Julio is our VP of Applied Project Management. Sorry, Laura is our VP of Marketing. Julio, your turn. Hi, everybody. My name is Julio Ruiz. I am the Vice President of Applied Project Management, and thank you for being here in this leader meeting virtual. Um, just I want to say, PMI Dallas chapter are doing the best for our members. That's why we are doing this kind of events due the coronavirus crisis, but we want all our members very engaged with our chapter. Um, we, are do, uh, we are doing the, the best to try to contribute with the professional development for each one. So thank you very much for, to be here. Thank you, Julia. And Julio does have some special announcement in later slide. I see Pat still here. Pat, do you mind to speak for our attendees? Oh, no. Thank you everybody for uh, coming and for those of you who are here earlier for sticking around. You'll be, uh, you'll be happy to hear our uh, speaker, Valerie Pellin, who's coming up next. I know a lot of times it, it's really hard to be positive with all of the stuff going on around us. Uh, you know, and for some people there's more, there's more trauma than others. But um, I think that it's a, a good tip I had read about this and I think it works. Uh, if you, every day you try to think about, uh, you know, just take a minute and think about what you're grateful for. Uh, sometimes you have to practice that, but uh, if you do it all the time, you'll, you'll feel better about what's going on and you can probably turn more to being hopeful rather than worry. Thank you, Pat. And I know Da is still here. Da is our VP of communication. I'm trying to get my communications working. Hopefully you can all see me now. <laughs> Thanks so much for joining our meeting tonight. I'm looking at the participant panel. There's like 152, 152 people here. A lot yes. of people have their cameras on. I think I said last time, it's great to see everybody. Um, you know, I feel it's, it's an odd feeling to see how connected I think we all feel. We see each other in our homes and, uh, you know, kind of building on what Pat said, there's so much going on in our world. One of the things that uh, I'm just trying to do is figure out like, what are the things that I know I can control and keep track of and try not to worry about the things that I can't control. And that's not easier said than done, of course, but um, I appreciate everybody coming here. Um, I, I, I know that everybody on this, all of our volunteers are working really hard to try to bring virtual events and, and make a great experience for everybody. So thanks so much for, for joining tonight. Thank you, Doc. Jerry is our VP of Finance. Jerry? Can I take, uh, uh, can I share my screen? Yes. Right. Uh, you want to share your screen? Okay. Stop sharing. Yeah. Okay, you can share your screen. Because we all know that pictures uh, speak a thousand <laughs> words. 
Let me know if you can see my screen. Yes, we can see it. Okay. I don't know if you've been keeping track on social media uh, these days, but uh, this is the, uh, it was a meme, but obviously mayhem has uh, been a big part of 2020 uh, and, and uh, kind of encapsulates what we've experienced so far. A lot of other strange things have happened. You know, scientists found a cave that's been closed for 5 million years and, you know, our thought it was perhaps not the best year to discover new creatures because they might get out of control. But one of the Sorry, other things, it may just be me. I don't actually see your screen, um, you Jerry. I just see you. I, I can't. I didn't see the screen either. <laughs> In the mountains. Yes. I had some great pictures up. It's like, all right. We can see your back, the backdrop. Oh, wait a minute. Here we go. Yeah. See my backdrop? Well, that's fun too. Let me go back to the start because it's, it's all okay. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being honest because I might, maybe it's my issue. I, I have. All right, let's see if I can, uh, let's see if I can actually get it. Can I you can see, see it now. Oh, there oh. It is. yes. Got it. There it is. Mayhem. Oh, okay. Mayhem. So, oh yes. Everybody's this guy, right? Yes. I love that. I'm I'm that. <laughs> He's, I posted this the other day, and I said he kind of encapsulates all of 2020 so far, and I can't wait to see what comes next. It's been a strange year. Uh, it's been a year that certainly can get people down. Um, if you can see this, yeah, they found 33 new creatures that don't exist anywhere else in nature in a, in a cave they un, unsealed. It had been sealed for 5 million years, and the joke going around then was like, maybe they should not uh, be looking for those kind of things this year. Uh, <laughs> Oh, no. so, so and this slide is <laughs> a lot of a lot of how you approach things depends on your perspective. Yeah, you know, I was trying to think of how to be uplifting to a group of project managers who look for risk and how to mitigate it, and they see the worst, the worst of the worst, and say, "Okay, we have to take care of that." In fact, we're kind of <laughs> wired for it deep in our lizard brain, back in the amygdala, you know. But you can always see a different side of things. Yeah, you, know, you can always see the bad, but I, I encourage people to look at the good stuff. You see this picture, you know, depending on which side you are on the mob, depend, you know, depends on uh, how you view what is actually going on. <laughs> uh, SpaceX launched the first people into orbit from the United States since the space shuttles were, uh, were <laughs> retired. Now that, that is something noteworthy. And since I am now a dog owner, I did not want a dog, uh, but yeah. Mr. Banks, <laughs> and he's turned, out, he's turned out to be one of the best morale boosting uh, people in my life, and he's a person because just ask him. Uh, but he's also proven mm -hmm. to be an ambassador to my entire neighborhood because I, don't, I didn't know any of my neighbors after two years. And right? Mr. Banks is so cute, then his tongue, he could probably lick his own ears. Uh, but uh, it's a good way to meet people I've now met almost all of my neighbors who aren't afraid of dogs i uh, know their dogs whether they're big small or it so i encourage you you know if you're feeling down if you need to do something change your perspective and um uh you know get a dog or not yeah got two they may put so, something while sheltering at home you know maybe next time during the first networking session we will tell people to share their path that sounds and there's something appropriate, okay? Not a bad thing. Yeah. Yeah, you never know, right? Right. Well, yeah. I I didn't see any other board member here, so Jerry, I'm gonna take the the control Please back. Do. So I didn't see other board member here. If I'm missing anybody, can can you just shout out your name? This is Valerie. I'm here. Oh, Valerie, I'm so sorry. And Ariana is here. Valerie, your turn. You know, I'm just going to echo what everybody else says. The struggle is real. We have issues going on right and left. Everyone has something going on. And I just want to tell everybody, don't give up. Fight the good fight. Promote yourself and find a way to serve others. Because that's what we do as volunteers for PMI Dallas, as volunteers for Toastmasters. We try and serve others and help them improve. If you'll do that, you're going to eventually wind up on the other side of this in a much better place. So have a great night. Thank you, Valerie. And I know Ariana is here. Ariana? Yeah, hi, everybody. I'm Mariana Stone. I'm the VP Professional Development. And since everybody's already had such great 
comments. It's like, all I can say is I'm like, I'm happy that right now still things are blooming outside, even though my allergies are not happy about it. I do appreciate having a green tree in my front yard and little white blooms and all that good stuff. And it kind of reminds me that there's still pretty stuff out there in nature and you just have to go out and take a deep breath, look at it, and it just improves your day immediately. So that's my positive thought for the day. Thank you so much. Is no any problem. more member here I didn't catch? Amen. Uh, Joe? Yes. That, awesome. I didn't see the picture. So, Joe? Yeah, so uh, much like many of the other board members, what I would say is um, it is a difficult situation. Um, obviously, on multiple fronts, and we've got things going on in the world, uh, especially in the U.S. So, what I would say is, through all these things, just consider and be be mindful and loveful of individuals, right? So, despite what may be going on in the world, um, love is the thing that can help all of us get through all of this. So, just keep that in the back of your minds um, and share love with others. That's all. Good job. Thank you. Thank you. Share love with others is so powerful. Anybody else I missed and I didn't catch? If not, we do have a volunteer opportunity. Like what Doc said, we do need a web director. We, we still want to see if you are interested in any of the role. Please go to VRNS. That's actually on your website. So please check on the PNI website, and we do have our volunteer position there. Currently, we are going to run the board election. I know we have amazing people serving on our board. We have VP of Communication, VP of Education, VP of Program, VP of Operation, VP of Marketing Role. Uh, well, after election, then I highly recommend if you say, hey, I'm not ready for the VP, maybe reach out to them because they lead their team really well. Maybe that would be an opportunity. You can say, I really like this part of volunteer role and learn from them. Maybe that would be the next year or three years later. It doesn't matter. I highly recommend, first, consider be a volunteer. Second, cast your vote. When we call for nomination, consider to nominate somebody or self-nominate yourself for our board seat. Thank you. I do want to address, I do know there are a lot of members uh, under the hardship. With the PNI Global, they do offer something called hardship provision. If you have been a member, active pay PNI member for over three years, you are under hardship, you can contact PNI. They will cover you PNI membership. If you are under follow or you are under unemployment, please contact PNI to see if you qualify for this membership waiver. Then second is we do if you no matter you currently what field you are, as long as you are a PNI member, PNI actually provide professional development scholarship. In that say, I actually apply. I apply for the beginning of the year to see if that is a difficult process because I never tried before. I actually got the Microsoft Project program for free. Hmm. Simply two page application. It doesn't take me more than 30 minutes. I submit my application and in a couple of weeks, I receive PNI offer professional development scholarship four times a year. So the next due date is July 1st. I highly recommend you go to PNI Eve website. They have an academic, academic scholarship and they have professional development scholarship. And that can apply to a lot of PN related like Six Sigma, Lin Six Sigma, or like me, I choose Microsoft Project PWA because that's what my work will ask me for. So how do you recommend to check out that? Military chapter guest pass, Ariana will talk about that in the next couple slides. So I highly recommend if you know anybody was a veteran and talk to Ariana, connect to Ariana, and she's going to talk more about this. We have three top events. In this weekend, we will have the user story and release planning webinar. That is an amazing webinar with a really experienced agile coach. 
you want to go to that place, that, that workshop you want to attend because that is really an amazing, uh, amazing workshop. I talked to the instructor. He actually, I called himself my mini coach and he's just a very humble guy. Please, if you want to know more about Agile, go learn from him. We, as a chapter, we are honored. Thank you, Pat, to do all the heavy lifting to invite Scott Embler. If you don't know who the Scott Embler, let me give you an idea. Is He is one of the founding father of Discipline Agile. I believe most of, most of the member has been received email from P&I talking about Discipline Agile. Scott Ember is the brand of the Discipline Agile. He's going to talk to us. You can ask any question you want with Scott Ember. Then we have Talk here. Talk, can you just say hi one more time? Talk. Had to find the mute button. Hi, one more time. Hi, one more time. <laughs> Talk. 7-Eleven is the winning project management office in 2019 PNI Project Management Award. We invite them to come here to give people an idea what behind just the trophy. Then the best part is 7-Eleven, the July has a lot of meaning for them. They say they're going to have something special to wow us. I highly recommend you to join us and experience the wow experience from 7-Eleven, and they are still hiring. Todd has been gracious to share his LinkedIn profile. If you connect with Todd and you have questions, I believe Todd will do his best to answer you, but be patient with him because he still have a full-time job, so he will do the best he can, trust me. Special announcement, I would like to uh, introduce our VP of Professional Development, Ariana Snow. Ariana? Yes, hi. So um, one of the things that falls within professional development is uh, the military outreach program that PMI is driving as an organization. So PMI National is very much involved and has some great opportunities and programs to help veterans that want to get certified or are entering, you know, the private or public uh, regular work environment and you know coming into wanting to do project management because their skill sets are very much needed and also very much pertain to a lot of project management type jobs out there so the ultimate goal is basically is to assist in our community um, to find employment and project management um, using you know membership help, certification help, and mentoring help. Um, so in that initiative, we have the military chapter guest pass. Now you already have to be a PMI member before being able to get the guest pass, but it gives you a one year free membership to your local chapter. And um, I'm in the process of requesting those for the Dallas chapter, and we should be able to hand them out. So if you know of anybody that is a recent vet and that is looking to um, join PMI or is thinking about possibly um, becoming certified in project management, please feel free to re have them reach out to me and uh, we'll see if we can get them to the at least free chapter membership so they can find out about all of our programs and be able to get into the loop about our education offerings and uh, mentoring offerings and all those activities. Now, qualifying for PMI certifications, we're hoping to do in the fall a workshop to, with mentors um, open to veterans to sit down to either go through the application process and help them with that, or also just to figure out and see as to which of the certifications may apply to them in the best way, and also to maybe do a mini kind of workshop about PM Bach or any other topic. It's like we're working on that and I will be posting actually um, positions out in VRMMS for that event planning and coordinating and also kind of leading it a little bit. So if you're interested also on that, those should be out there soon. Uh, also send me a little email or shout out. Now obviously we also have through paths 
know, VP programs, a lot of other opportunities, and we'll try to provide discounts or um, help with those. And then the last part is that we're also, of course, wanting to continue to support via mentoring. And um, we're always looking for mentors that have background in the military services. So we have them available to help when we have a veteran coming to look for mentoring from our chapter and also be able to bring the PM experience. And um, there is an actual PMI national um, concierge for anybody that is a current PMI member that has questions about, you know, whether it's a hardship to get their membership reduced during the current situation, or also just to find out as to whether or not they still qualify for any of their national kind of offers that they have. Um, if you'd like to get that info from me, please let me know and I will share it with you. Um, and I think that's pretty much it. There's a lot more. So there's a lot of, on the national level, they have a lot of more information in regards to COOL or any of the other government programs where you could get uh, certification for free as a veteran or at least refund it if you, you know, it, it's paid for... The program. Mm -hmm. And um, so you're a recent vet and you're wanting to get certified and you have a partner or spouse that is also looking to do that, you would still be included under the same program. So that's a big, big, big bonus in my book. So um, yeah, I think that's pretty much all I can really tell this time. So if you have questions, please reach out to me and I'll gladly help. Ariana has been very humble. Actually, those are a lot of work and he, her department actually helped a lot of veterans. And Ariana, just let you know, Jerry's a veteran too. And I know Brian is, so I will hook you up and connect you with them. And I know Tony has already volunteered some of his help too. And he's been on the previous yeah. occasions where we've tried to do this in the chapter. So he's a good resource. And I have several. But yeah, yeah. it would be awesome. Yeah, we will definitely do more to the people who serve the country, who protect us. Thank you, Ariana. The next yeah. one will be Julio. Julio is our VP of Applied Project Management. Anything about outreach will be under Julio's domain. Julio? Hi, May. Can you hear me? Yes. OK, thank you. Uh, hi, everybody. My name is Julio Ruiz. I am the Vice President of Applied Project Management. Um, basically, my area is about how can we impact uh, other communities outside the professional field. So that's why uh, this year we are start starting with a different initiative, like working with nonprofit organization. Uh, we are visiting a, a project management clubs in different universities in Dallas area. Um, hopefully, we are um, designing a professional program, uh, sorry, a program management program for youth. Probably uh, there is a oncoming project management program for teachers too. So we have a, a very enthusiastic team working on that. Also, we are the license for the Educational Foundation. So there is a nonprofit organization uh, working together with the PMEI organization. So this foundation is about how can we transfer uh, project management skills for, for youth. So we have a project, uh, a PMIF license in the, the chapter who is working on that too. Make the next um, slide, please. So every year, PMI Data Chapter has a program to provide three scholarships for all the people who want to advance in their professional development careers. So this year we have three scholarships. Uh, Waraka Inigar is was the past president, is the past pre one of the past president of PMI Dalla Chapter. And we have another scholarship called James Ranking, um, Wayne Light Layton Project Management Scholarship too. So each scholarship uh, is up to thousand five hundred dollars. So we open a, a the application 
at, in, um, since February to, to May. So the good news is we, uh, we have 78 applicants right now. Um, PMI Global um, are re reviewing all the applications right now. So that is a good thing for us. So in September, probably we are going to communicate who are the winners for the scholarship this year. So this is a good number. Um, this is um, for good for every, everybody for the chapter because also we want to contribute with the professional career for a student who wants to move forward in, in su professional development careers. So, so you have any question or so you have any idea how, about how can we work with another nonprofit organization? For example, see so if you are working with a um, children association, something like that, please don't hesitate in contact me. Uh, we can design something for, for this organization. Thank you, Julio. And I'm not quite sure, I will say, I'm not quite sure if Duraka is alive, but Duraka actually is a past president of PNI Dollar Chapter. The scholarship not only is recognize his hard work and effort, but also to bring the future project manager, future project change maker to make them have a great career. So as a president, I think as a volunteer, the president of the chapter, this is the highest recognition from the chapter level, but also it's a legacy for them to the future project managers. So thank you, Julio, for, for all your effort and your team. The next one will be our VP of Marketing, Laura. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> well, I, I touched this earlier in the meeting, but um, what this is about is the ambassador program, which is one department of the marketing. Um, we have three areas, but today I'm gonna to talk about the ambassador program, which in essence, it increased the visibility of corporations in the metro areas, as well as helping the ambassador, which, which are members that belong to those companies, to enhance their expert their expertise. So the message today is, obviously all of us are enthusiastic about project management, that's why we're here tonight. And would you like to represent the chapter at your workplace? We're reaching out to you, we're interested, we want you to come to the table and talk with us. And the benefits there is to help to increase your brand. Your brand is a professional, as a leader and a change champion. And what that gives is that you enhance your organization's project management expertise as well as you can also share content within the PM community, which is quite an opportunity. And then you also have access to free trainings and templates and all that. Kathy run the program, Kathy Bailey, and she can be reached at that email address, rcc at PMI Dallas, or you can text her or call her at that number, 469-39-7937. And if you want to think about it, we have lots of information online. Um, mm -hmm. So you can go to the Corporate Ambassador site there, and we're going to the chat. Or if you're ready to roll today, just go and uh, put your name in. Uh, that's vrs.pmi. That's where a volunteer apply for the opportunity to become an ambassador, uh, meaning that they're representing the chapter at their workplace. Lots of benefit, guys. Thanks for hearing. Uh, we look forward to talking with you guys soon. Thank you. Thank you, Laura. And I know Dewaka is here, but was here when I called his name, but he couldn't unmute himself. Dewaka, do you mind just, we are three minutes to the presentation. Dewaka, do you mind just say one sentence or two? Just say hi, and we want to recognize you. Thank you for your effort for the chapter. Uh, thank you, everyone. Hi, my name is Dewaka. I've been the past president. I'm the past president. I've been a president before. Um, and it's really not about me. It is really about the entire team. And it's about all of us here that, uh, that the recognition is 
in terms of the scholarship. Uh, it's not just any one of us. Everyone has worked towards that. When I was the president, that's when it started. Uh, we, we started uh, yeah, giving out the scholarship, giving out the scholarship. And uh, we, we felt that, you know, the only way we can give back to the community is by educating the youngsters in Project Panel. Because at that time, there were, the youngsters were not coming into it. But I think it's picking up now with the millennials. So thank you everyone for coming and uh, coming to this meeting. It's amazing to see 160 plus coming to this meeting. It's really amazing. Thank you, Maylin, for giving me this opportunity to speak here. Give me a second. Hello. Okay. Can you guys hear me? So yeah. I'm sorry, I probably will take two, two like a, I will take additional five minutes for the chapter announcement. And I'm so sorry for the, our speaker, Barry. I will try to um, be a, as fast as I can. And welcome to our new certified members. Then if you are here today, and I'm, I'm so sorry today, may not have enough time for us to recognize you here. But when we resume our in-person meeting, we will definitely, definitely invite you to to the stage and receive the chapter gift. Then our May, we have 13 new certified members, and I think Lawrence and Rekic is here. Every if you are here next time when we are in the when we are in the in-person meeting, we have a small token of appreciation for you and welcome you to the PNI family. Then we had two new certified members in June. Today, the last slide today is we ask you to snap a screenshot. If right now you are here, thank you everyone. I recommend everyone right now, stop eating and snap a screenshot. Then after the screenshot, you post something online, something you learned today. For example, I met a person and from Think Tank because Think Tank was great and one takeaway from the Think Tank. Then I ask you when you post that on LinkedIn, you hashtag PNI Dollars. So three steps for the network tips today is, now is the opportunity, Julio, Julio, don't look up. People are taking screenshot. <laughs> so look at camera right now. If you able, Julio, can you take a screenshot for me because I with my phone. Okay. So everyone, take your own screenshot. It will be unique. Take a screenshot. Okay. Smile. If your face is too small, it's the time to put a little bit closer. That I think Mark was adjusting his better side. Ah, that is a good sign, Mark. How about some smile? See, that's awesome smile. So now I call one, two, three. If you haven't taken a screenshot, I'm gonna call one, two, three. Then we will go to the next step. One, two, three. Okay, so you have the screenshot. Today, at the end of the day, the meeting, before you turn off your computer, before you let go of your device, post that screenshot and have one, positive takeaway and hashtag PNI dollars. Thank you so much for the business announcement. Now I would like to welcome our assistant vice president, Lisa Sung. Lisa has been volunteer for PNI dollars chapter for three years and he was born and raised in China. A graduate has a master degree in management information system from Texas A&M University. We are lucky to have her today. She's going to introduce our speaker for us. Please help me to welcome Lisa Sang. Thanks, May. I'm glad to see 100 plus people here online with us today. Um, I promise you will not be disappointed. For the keynote presentation today, we're delighted to invite back a keynote speaker from 2019 to give 
another interactive presentation on a subject that will benefit all of us in the audience. So our speaker tonight is Valerie Pellen. She will be speaking about executive presence, key to getting promoted. So Valerie is more than qualified to speak on this subject. He is the president of Integrated Focus in Dallas and an accomplished executive coach herself. She was certified professional certified coach by International Coaching Federation. And over the past 15 years, Valerie has worked on one-on-one -on -one basis with more than 150 executives from a wide range of industries. What she's going to share with us tonight is not just at the academic level, what executive presence is and then the techniques, but what she's going to share with us is what I would call golden nuggets or hidden treasures. Those are the essence from her 15 years of experience in coaching executives, and those are people use them and then actually work. Those are tried and true, um, actionable tips on what you can do to build executive presence. So I really hope everyone will be able to take some of those golden nuggets with you and apply it to what you do. So next time you will not be passed over by that promotion opportunities that you are working toward because the leadership felt you did not have that executive presence. So without further ado, I want to turn over uh, the meeting to Valerie Pellen and his presentation, Executive Presence, the Key to Getting Promoted. Valerie, back to you. Thank you, Lisa. It always sounds like Lisa has called my mother for that introduction, so thank you. Let me share my presentation and see if it, we get it up. There we go. Everyone, this is a key presentation. It's one of my favorites because it came out of all these coaching sessions. People like you, men and women, receive feedback that they lacked executive presence. The feedback from their upper management was vague, not very actionable. And when they Googled executive presence, they got a lot of descriptive discussions on it. So what the golden nuggets are, are actionable steps you can take to improve your executive presence. The format for today is that I will be asking you various questions and in, you'll put your answers, your responses in the chat box. And Pat Chaudhry is going to help me by reading the responses in the chat box. I would prefer if you save your questions to the end of the presentation since there's so many people here. So I'd rather we go flow through the presentation and then afterwards I'll be happy to stay around for questions. And Valerie, if this is yes. Michael, I'm sorry to interrupt. Can you start the slideshow, please? Instead of, uh, we can see like the, the whole PowerPoint uh, application. There okay. should be a slideshow button that you can uh, start. Oh, yeah, right? where? I think it's right there underneath the start slideshow. It's that one thing. Uh, see where it says auto save? That's the save. That's the undo, redo. It's like a little thing that looks like a screen. That one. Back. This one. Nope. No, you Two can over. click on the bottom. Oh, yeah. of the, uh, yeah. Well, she's so close. If you go over, I know two, two over, three, two, two right. icons two over. One. Yeah, one, yeah more. one more, one more. There you go. That's the there one. Click go. it. Go click. There we go. Okay. There Thank you, you go. Thank you. Sweet. Okay. All right. <laughs> so Thank the you. format, as I was saying, is that I'll be asking you questions. Please put your responses to the questions in the chat box, and Pat will be reading them. And if you could save your questions to the end, 
So we go through the flow of the presentation. So I'd like you to picture this and many of the inspirational things that the board members say fit this. You're at a wedding and you're sitting at the table with people you've known, maybe for 10 years, 15 years, and you look over and you see the kiddie table and you know the children at weddings always have the best food, right? Chicken fingers, french fries, those little pizzas, ice cream, sprinkles, and you wander over to that food table and you meet all these new people. And my client met a whole group of new people, contacts, and through one of them, he changed to the company he worked in and got promoted. So let's take a different perspective tonight, look at some of these critical success factors and see where they may enhance your career or your opportunities or your skill set. So that's what this presentation is about. It's about action steps. So if you walk away with two or three good takeaways, I'll be happy. So the first question in the chat box is what is your definition of executive presence? So if you could put those in the chat box and Pat will read them out after we get some definitions. Pat, how are we doing on the definitions? Oh, I've been talking the whole time, excuse me. Okay, we have a lot of confidence. We have servant leadership several times. Uh, confidence leading a meeting group, confidence and leadership, ability to communicate vision, speaking at an executive level. Um, Oh, those are all good. Okay, those are all good. <clears throat> so one of my clients, in a sort of ironic way, in a definition of uh, executive presence or leadership presence, whichever term is used in your company, said, it must be my readiness to get promoted. Because since I don't have it, I'm not ready. So what I did is break it down into seven critical success factors. The top three are key, the top four. The bottom three are more strategic and sometimes forgotten when people work on their executive presence. So we're going to go through each one of those and see how they build the case toward executive presence. And everything that everybody says, it's all part of executive presence. It's important to take charge of your career and to know whether you're the manager type or the leader type. So also now in the chat box, I'd like you to write the definition in terms of roles and responsibilities and scope between a manager and a leader. And I'm looking more for the textbook definition. People follow a leader. Managers do things right. Mm -hmm. Managers direct, leaders inspire. That's a good one from Janelle. Walk the talk from Canon. 
A leader sets a good example. Okay, so here is the difference between a manager, more tactical, and a leader, more strategic. So executive presence has to do with the more strategic leadership. Sometimes a leader is a manager too, may straddle the two worlds depending on the situation. But look at the difference. And you may be more comfortable as a manager versus the leader. A manager does things right. The leader does the right thing for the whole company, for the bigger organization. The manager is more focused in on direct reports and teams and workers. The leader has stakeholders, customers, shareholders, board of directors, suppliers, a much broader, more strategic view. The leader is a role model and thinks about the mission and the vision. So a leader has much more strategic, where the manager is more tactical. A leader might be there with the executive group, has to make the tough yes and no decisions. You have to feel comfortable there. So you have to ask yourself, if you're going to work on this executive presence, if that's where you want to interact and lead on the executive level. Do you embody the mission and vision of the company? Can you make those tough decisions? 30% of executives who do get promoted fail because of interpersonal and communication skills. They're not comfortable up there in that executive realm with those tough decisions. There's two articles that I reference here, and I think they're key articles. And yes, you'd say, oh, one came out in 2004, one came out in 2008. But these are the key articles about leadership. So instead of reading Daniel Goldman's book on emotional intelligence or his books on primal leadership, this was a Harvard Business Review article, so it's a fairly quick and concise read. He gives you the five components of emotional intelligence. He gives you a definition and then what he calls hall hallmarks or behaviors or action steps that show you're skilled at that particular component of emotional intelligence. So that's really, to me, the article on emotional intelligence. And I've kind of modeled this presentation, like him giving you a definition, and then the action steps. What do people see? How your performance, how effective you are. The second article is social intelligence. This is about team leadership. The social intelligent leader, the one that they say is the role model, was the late Herb Kelleher of Southwest Airlines. Social intelligent leader is about teamwork, organizational awareness, inspiration. There are seven components of that. So to me, these are two key articles. Even if you're working on your manager skills, these are articles that you should read and are important in terms of leadership. So let's move on to the seven critical success factors. The first one is credibility in communication. So what I'm going to ask you, you see there's two, two sets of uh, numbers and they, two, with three parts, they have to add to 100%. So it could be 35, 35, and 30, 40, 50, and 10, however you see it. What percent of your communication, the credibility when you communicate, comes from how you look, your body language, how you sound, your tone, or what you say, the content? 
So in the chat box, put what you think the three numbers are that will add to 100%. We have a 40-40-20 from Andrew. Yes. 40-20-40 uh, from, uh, oh, I can't see from whom. 30-30-40. Uh, 30 looks, 30 sound, 40 say. 60-30-40. Ten from Haley Pittman. Fifty, thirty, twenty from Constance. Saeed uh, is sixty, thirty, ten. Fatima sixty, thirty, ten. Okay, pretty good. The two studies came very, very close. The top one was done at the University of California at Berkeley, and they used the words look, sound, and say. The bottom was done by Dr. Albert Morabian at UCLA, and his study showed that body language and tone account for the majority of your credibility, not what you say. You know how people can read your nonverbal communication in how you look? They can see you in a meeting if you're engaged or not. Do you make eye contact? That's what he was saying was more powerful than what you say. So that's very important. When you think about yourself in a meeting, how do you sound? How do you look? So it's not what you say. It's not the content. So a lot of the engineers that I coach went, ah, aha, because engineering is so much on the content and they never worked on how they looked or how they sounded. So that's something to consider when you go into a, a, a meeting. How do you look and how you sound? And with these online meetings, what do people see? What, what can they see from you in this short screen that you have. So here's some action steps. And this is something for you to check. During a meeting, do you speak with assertive communication? What's your nonverbal and your body language? Do you make eye contact? These are important things to monitor when you're in a meeting. Another thing about communication is maintaining the speaking floor. How many of you have been in a meeting where someone tries to interrupt you? It's like, that's why they went to the meeting, to interrupt you, or drop an off-topic comment to kind of sway you. You need to stay on topic. Quickly handle the interruption and move on with what you're saying. Even if you're in a meeting where you don't know all the details, still weigh in with an opinion or kind of tag on to what someone else says. Show that you're engaged. So that's really important, that engagement look, that you're committed, and use the assertive communication. And if you're the type that has to analyze what's been presented, at least say from what I've heard now, make some comment that's really, it just shows that you're engaged and involved in the meeting. Now, the two pieces of advice that I got a long time ago are, is the last bullet. Don't ask permission. Don't preface a question with, I'm sorry. And... Yeah. <laughs> don't say, this may be a stupid question, but please don't. It really detracts from your credibility. It's really important just to ask your question. And if you're in the meeting, then you contribute and act engaged. So these are really credibility communication checklists for everybody to Maintain that speaking floor. 
Okay, let's move on to the next one. So what's your definition of managing up? Now, you remember there's managing up, managing down, and managing your peers. So this one is the managing up. So in the chat box, what's your definition of managing up? Managing your boss and what he, the, he or she thinks from you. Giving your manager the impression you want them uh, to see, what you want them to see in you. Setting expectations. Asking questions and giving feedback. Influencing your management. Communicating with upper level managers, developing positive reinforcement, uh, gentle direction of your manager. Uh, that's a good one. Yeah, those are, those are all good. I like those. Managing okay. your boss. <laughs> <laughs> one of the key things, remember your boss, this is the reality. You need a working relationship with your boss because you want to look effective. And you may not have the same communication style or the same decision-making style as your boss, but you need to adapt because then your boss will think you're effective and they'll like your performance. And that's key in having a working relationship with your boss. You get results your boss gets results and the company gets results. So you really need a good working relationship with your boss. So adapting to your boss's style is good because they'll think you're effective. Now, the second layer on that is, do you know what your boss is concerned about and your boss's boss? Because if you really want to excel, helping them with solutions that make them look good makes you look good. Mm -hmm. So leveraging that relationship with your boss so it's a win-win is key. Your boss is usually the first one who does the promotion and recommendation and your boss's boss usually goes along with your boss if they have a good working relationship. So it's important to get your management team as your upper management in line with you. As people said in their definition, you want your boss to have confidence in your performance. And they, boss or any person will have confidence in your performance if you have the same communication style, you come through with solutions and decision-making as they do because they're comfortable. If you have that good relationship, you can then ask for constructive feedback much easier when you have a good working relationship and much easier to ask for promotion or those high visibility projects. So managing that up and upper management is key to your career. Now let's look at managing down and kind of managing sidewards. How do you engage team members? Remember, it's a different set of skills for managing up, managing down and managing sidewards. So how do you engage team members? Give them opportunities to collaborate with you. Give them okay. responsibility. Trust them. Include them in meetings. Lead by example and have integrity. Inspire them to take ownership. Oh, yes. So those are all, those are all good. One of the key things is 
thinking about what would a 360 say? Now, I've seen people, uh, results of 360s of people wanting to get promoted or been promoted up to a certain level where they're really good at managing up, but terrible in managing the direct reports. And that doesn't look good. So everything that everybody chimed in on was excellent. So you need open and transparent communication. You need to solicit input from team members and project team members. Ask for their input about timelines, resources. When you look fair and consistent, you build the trust factor. People like to be held accountable for deadlines, timelines that they contributed to the discussion. Then you can link rewards to performance. And everybody likes to be, get recognition. So recognizing individual team members in the team is important. So when you th think about how you like to be managed by a manager or a leader, that's how you engage your team members. If you want to up your performance, then providing a strategic perspective on what the project is about or how it fits into the big picture or the timeline, giving a more strategic perspective works in your favor in making your performance more effective and more leader-like. <clears throat> the other thing people see is how you handle those critical discussions, those discussions when there's timeline constraints, budget constraints, when there's resource restraints, or there's real disagreements. That's what people remember. How did you handle that? Did you come to a solution? Did you work with everybody? Listen to all parts of the situation. That's what people remember, how you handle that. That adds to your reputation and the anecdotal information about you. So that's key in terms of engaging team members. So they call it empathetic cooperation is a sort of technical name for that. The next critical success factor is delivering results. So we all know about delivering results on time and within budget. But let's take this a step further. Let's look at it from what's your track record. This is where your reputation gets built. This is how you go back to your boss and say, listen, my track record is this, this, this. This is key. You have to deliver on time and within a budget. That's just expected. If not, then you need to document. You need to tell people what's not going to happen or what's going to happen. Remember, it reflects on you and your brand. So when people say anecdotally, oh, always gets in on time and with bu in budget, this is where that information comes from. It's your track record. How did you manage the project? How did you manage the people? That's what this delivering results in. So my guess on that 30% statistic we saw, those people, might have been their communication skills. Somehow, they didn't have a good track record. That's what I think that 30% comes from. So remember, it's your track record, and this is really important. The next three critical success factors are more strategic. So before you put your response in the chat box, 
I want to tell you a story. I was sitting in a promotion meeting and got down to two candidates and they were both equally supported by their manager, upper management, their whole chain of command. But one person had other recommendations and good words put in for them from stakeholders. So if we take a broader view of a stakeholder and consider your stakeholder network, and especially now in times when you need as many friends and stakeholders as possible, then looking at stakeholders, not from just one project view, but in terms of your network becomes really important. So stakeholders can influence whether you get promoted or not, what projects you're on. So thinking of it that way, who are your stakeholders in general terms? Those who are impacted directly or indirectly. They can be your clients, shareholders, end users, customers, developers, testers. It's a long laundry list. <laughs> okay. One so good. stakeholders. Everyone okay. can be a stakeholder. stakeholder. That's right. That's right. All that's true. Stakeholders, and this is a more strategic way of looking at your network and your stakeholders, may have direct or indirect influence in both positive and negative ways on your career and the projects you get chosen for. It's so important to have a network. And a network can be people below you, uh, on peers, or above you. It's having that network. That's so important. What opportunities do you have to cultivate your network, to expand it, to think about people who you need to connect with? That's what stakeholders are. And now when people need connections, stakeholders are, are really important in terms of employment, job opportunities, good projects. It just helps in terms of that information sharing. So networking is not socializing. It's strategic use of your time. It's about career opportunities. It's sharing information, just like you did in the beginning of this meeting, about opportunities in companies, about passing the PMP test. It's all that. That's what networking is. It's a broader view of information. It helps your career. Where can you collaborate across the organization? Collaboration is a key executive skill. Working with another group enhances your reputation. I have another story about stakeholders. It seems stakeholders are key in people's career. I was coaching this VP, and there were like 15 VPs, but there were only three executive vice president positions. So walk into the coaching session with this one VP, and he's got a laundry list of 10 items. He's going to work on each one of these things. He's going to get that promotion to executive VP. And he's got it all mapped out. And we get to the bottom of the list. And I said to him, what about collaborating across the organization? Well, he sat there and stared at me. It seemed like five minutes. He said, I didn't put that on the list. I said, well, where can you collaborate? Where are there synergies? Or where can you help each other? And he came up with a project with an executive VP. So here he was collaborating up, very smart on his part. And within four months, he was promoted to executive VP. 
So the collaboration, when you collaborate, it shows you understand the organizational dynamics, how the organization operates, understand where there could be resources you can help out. It shows a united mission and vision for the company. So it shows a lot of strategic skills and leadership skills. That's why collaboration is key across the organization. So I put together a matrix, and this should help you when you think about your stakeholders. Because how much time can you spend with stakeholders? So you have to kind of put them into boxes of maybe their direct influence, less direct, across the organization, indirect. So they become important, your connections. So how much time would you spend with a lower power B might be once every three months. With a high power A, you might talk to them once every two or three weeks. So you have to modulate the amount of time and how you cultivate them. So this is important for your career. And it's especially now when there's so much uncertainty, the more people you can connect with and make linkages with, and if you can collaborate down the road with them, that's even more powerful. So spending time thinking about this is important in terms of stakeholders. The Harvard Business Review had an article about what they called networking or your stakeholders. So if I have, let's say, Bill is a high power B with me, as soon as I really connect with Bill, then I really have access to Bill's network because Bill and I are connected. We're kind of stakeholder together and we have access to each other's network. That makes it stronger. We have connections. In essence, LinkedIn is based on that kind of a model and so are alumni associations and organization like this too, in terms of linkages and connections. Let's move on to the next critical success factor, strategic thinking. This one is overlooked by many people when they consider getting promoted to the leadership. They forget about strategic thinking because it seems vague. So what's your definition in the chat box of strategic thinking? Let's make it concrete. Beginning with the end in mind. Mm -hmm. That's from Regina. Forward, forward thinking, that's from Maylin. Long-term vision, lateral thinking. The forest view from uh, Rama. Think big picture. Yeah. Aligned with the company's strategy. Yeah. Vision. Three to five year plans. Associated to the overall strategy of the company. Right. Okay. Good. We're we're on the right track. So do you know the difference between tactical and strategic? Yes, many of you do from your responses. But let me ask you, in your own company, do you understand the company operations? Do you understand the company financials? Or the company marketplace that's competing in? So a leader, and you'll see the last two bullets, the person who knows how will always have a job. But the person who knows why will be the leader. And that's the strategic view, the how and the why, the sort of bigger picture. But there's plenty of detail in there, too. So that's strategic thinking. And sometimes people get the feedback they can't get promoted because they don't have strategic thinking. OK, so what can you do to improve your strategic thinking? So you can read the Wall Street Journal, Harvard Business Review, Bloomberg, read your company's website, Wall Street, what are they saying? 
But understanding future trends, innovative ideas, and how global customers, global workforce, how this all kind of fits in is more strategic. So that's a bigger picture. There's two references here that are key when it comes to strategy. <clears throat> the first one is Michael Porter. He is the most researched and quoted per person and expert on strategy. He's written 18 or 19 books on strategy, competitive advantage, competitive strategy. He's used in business schools, business cases. Michael Porter is the person on strategy. He has Harvard Business Review articles. He's the person you read when you want to learn about strategy. People still use his analysis. It still holds true. He said the reason that he's so popular is he takes complex things, ideas, and he makes them easy to understand. So he's worth reading. The second bl book, Blue Ocean Strategy, which I think it's on its third edition, came out in 2005. And this was about differentiation and low cost. It was about innovation. So what they propose, they call red oceans the current market that companies compete in. And they said if you took the best from this red ocean and that red ocean and made a blue ocean, it would be uncontested space to compete in. And the example in the first book was Circus Olay. So that was one innovative idea they came with. A second innovative idea was they had a new matrix. So I'm sure all of you know about a SWOT analysis, but they created a matrix that had four different labels in the matrix. It was raise, eliminate, reduce, and create all about innovation and moving forward. So that's a very interesting book to read, to get some synopsis on what they came up with in this book. So when you mention this about strategy, these are the two experts on strategy worth quoting because these are the key people, key books, key thinking on strategy. The last critical success factor is influence. So what's your definition of influence? Being able to affect change, speaking softly yet still be heard, persuasion for purpose, how your overall message is perceived, the ability to propel others. Nice. Okay. Getting people to do things they wouldn't normally do. <laughs> <laughs> Influence is a skill. Leaders use it all the time. They may be on one side of the company, but they really weigh in and use their influence to get projects they want done, even though they may not, that may not be their area. You can use influence even without a formal title. You can prevent people from doing projects that maybe you don't like with your influence. So people use influence when they offer up solutions, when they want to build consensus, asking good questions, strategizing about the future. So you have to know what you're influencing to use it effectively. But people who use influence and leaders use it all the time are people who exhibit leadership 
And when you have stakeholders and you have a broader view of things, you're able to use influence to things that might be worthwhile or solutions. So the skills to improve influence are trustworthy, that self-confidence and commitment to the organization. People see that besides being likable and personally accountable and having assertive communication. So those are all good skills to work on. So that's what people see. And with the credibility and communication, assertive communication, your influence, you can use it in situations. So those are the seven critical success factors with action steps. So I'd like to leave you with words of wisdom. So I have two slides, kind of words of wisdom. I always say this to my clients if they haven't said it to me, that organizations are not always fair. People get promoted. You don't even know why they got promoted, but they did. It's just the politics of the situation. But what you need to do, and especially now in the difficult times, is develop a career plan. Write down all the good projects you've been on, all the skills you have. Make sure that you have a good track record and a good reputation. I know the Zoom meetings can be difficult in terms of connecting with people. So try to do one-on-ones in a Zoom meeting or follow up with emails. Keep the connections going. Have stakeholders. It's always good to have a sponsor or a mentor. The thing is to leverage your strengths and your skills the best you can. Have that career plan. And keep track of what's going on and how you're perceived. The person at the wedding that I spoke about in the beginning never would have changed jobs and never would have gotten promoted unless they had a different view. So it's important to take your career seriously and have a career plan. So if you want to sum it up, spend more time doing things about your career. Stakeholders, work on your communication, projecting your leadership with a self-confidence, having stakeholders, and spend less time doing things that don't promote your career, that just eat up your time and your energy, and don't produce forward motion. So that's key in terms of executive presence. So I'd be available now for any questions that people have. I'm going to ask a question I saw in the feed, Valerie. Sure. People wanted to know if it's important, you know, because we're talking about virtual meetings so much, is it important to have your camera on? So if eye contact, going back to that credibility and communication, so that if you don't have eye contact, having your camera on, being there in person, showing that you're interested in what's going on in the meeting, I think is a way to kind of compensate for the fact that we're online. I try to keep my camera on and I try to, I hate to say this dress for the meeting. I mean, there's a joke you could from, you could have yoga pants on from the waist down, but I try to dress for the meeting. So I look like I'm engaged. Any more questions? Oh, here is one. What are some other tips on developing your executive presence virtually? Yes. Yes. Yeah, I think your presence in meetings, connecting with people, maybe there's somebody new in a meeting, paying attention who's attending meetings, trying to find out more about them, 
trying to replicate as best you can in the current situation where we might not be going into the office that much, what you would do in the office, probably your best bet in terms of actions, because there might be limited availability of your access to going into the office, depending on the company and the situation, at least for the near future. Um, another one is how should body language change for women who want to project confidence? Ah, okay. So how are you sitting? Are you sitting like you're engaged? Are you forward? Uh, do you have an expression? Things that you shouldn't do is like tilt your head or keep nodding yes, yes. You want to look at the speaker. And when you ask a question again, make it direct and weigh in with an opinion. So try to keep your body language as neutral and as engaged as possible. If I may add a suggestion, um, a lot of us have cameras on our laptops or computers. Um, a great way to test what that looks like is to have a conversation with your kid or your husband or wife in front of that camera on your computer and just, you know, kind of go back and forth and play with it, you know, because I'll tell you, uh, my wife had a virtual interview and, you know, dressing from the waist up, of course. Um, but I'll tell you, the presence on a video versus your face-to-face -face presence, what you perceive is completely different on a camera. It, it, I mean, you have no idea until you play it back. And when you play it back, you're like, oh, really? I mean, it's crazy. So if you have any, if you, I think as project managers, we all kind of have a, a feeling for, what our presence is in a meeting. We all kind of know how we like to project, how we handle it, you know, interact with the people that we're, we're dealing with. But if you want to do that on a, on a webcam, get a couple of people together, you know, your kids, your husband, wife, and kind of get them all together in a room and sort of go back and forth. Maybe have a, you know, if you've got three people, I saw my, I saw my daughter have a, uh, have a, uh, an iPhone uh, conference, right? And there's like eight kids on the phone. <laughs> okay, it was a little disturbing. But I mean, you can do that yourself. You can set up a meeting between some people and sort of have a conversation and you can record it and you can see what, you know, sort of have that idea in mind and then go back to it and look at it. Do it in short little, in short little clips because after a while you get kind of tired of looking at yourself. And, well, um, Michael, you bring up a good point. One of the things that when you're practicing interviewing, it's good to be videotaped and see yourself because people have these little actions they do. I talk with my hands. So, you know, that's what you see on the camera. So, uh, yes, you're very right. Practice is important. Yes. There are a couple of others, uh, tips on how not to give away your ideas. Ah, yes. Mm -hmm. Yes, that's a good one, right. Um, or <laughs> working on someone else's project who then gets credit for it and you don't. Yeah, so drawing boundaries, making sure you work on the project is very important. Uh, it's different if you're in a, in a meeting and you're brainstorming ideas and you come up with something as a team, but if it's your idea, you need to take control of it and not let someone else lead the project, nor do you need to get assigned someone else's project and then they get credit for it. I've seen that happen too. So yeah, there's parameters and boundaries. So that's where your assertive communication comes in in terms of drawing some lines uh, in terms of that. 
Well, Valerie, we had another comment that it's good to uh, invest in good equipment. And then all of the other comments uh, that we have have been excellent presentation, great presentation. Are you going to share the deck? Yes, yes. So I think, you, Pat, you have a copy. Lisa has a copy, so yes. Okay, we'll do that then. Yes, and I, if anybody has a really personal question, uh, should I put my email in the chat box and then uh, uh, you can, they can email me? Yeah, you can do that. Um, the other thing too is I can also give you uh, a copy of your chat log here so that you can, uh, we can okay. identify who asked and we've got their emails too. Okay. If you want to put your email out there, uh, people can uh, yeah. send you. Uh, where is the? Um, oh, so, is the um, I think that uh, it just, uh, I've got yours. Okay. All right. I think put it out there. Uh, we probably ought to wrap up now. I want to thank you, Valerie, for um, being nice enough to come back twice. <laughs> uh, everybody enjoyed you the first time, and you did a wonderful job this time as well. Thank you. Uh, and we really appreciate it. I've been friends with Valerie for 20 years, <laughs> and um, I always love to talk to her. <laughs> so uh, I'm glad you were able to share uh, your wisdom with us today. Well, it was my client's wisdom. Men and women just like you and me trying to figure out some of the corporate feedback. So I'm glad to help. Okay, very good. Well, thanks, Valerie. We really appreciate it. Thank you. Now, before all of you leave, I want to...